In the previous lesson, we learned how to use the flowchart to set up our conversion factor flowchart in a way that we can take the given unit or the given values and find the unknown unit. And of course, like in this case, we're looking at this example problem. Here we are given 1.7 grams of calcium. And we are looking for if I have 1.7 grams of calcium, in that 1.7 gram of calcium, how many atoms of calcium are there? So in order to do that, we need to set up this flowchart in a way that follow this format. That is, using the flowchart here, that we have right here, we kind of know what to do in terms of what conversion factor that we have to multiply. So let's look at this example. We have 1.7 grams of calcium. Notice how we have the unit grams right there. And that unit gram tells you that we are starting at mass of A because that's where the unit gram is. So that's where we start, okay? And we always start at the boxes. Each box represents a specific unit. And that's why we have start at the given unit, okay? And where do we stop? Of course, we are going to stop at the unknown unit. So what do I mean by the unknown? The unknown is what you are looking for. In this case, you are looking for the unit of atoms. And we know that atoms is part of the representative particles right there, right there, atoms right there. And notice how we end at the representative particles. So to start from mass A all the way to here, there's no direct path, right? So we had to follow the flow chart. How do I do that? I start from here. So I will go down, of course, and you notice this is a double arrow. That means you can go up and down. It doesn't really matter, but this is where we end. So we're going to go down and guess what's next? We're going to go across. So notice how we have two arrows now. This is the first one. Okay. And this one is the second one. So we have to solve this problem based on the flow chart. So let's follow the flow chart. So we always start from a given, in this case is grams of calcium, that's where we start there. And now we're going to end at atoms, so let's set this up. Of course we're going to follow this format right here, okay? So it's going to be question mark, okay, atoms of calcium. So we're going to abbreviate atoms to a single form, so calcium right there. And followed by the equal sign, and we go back to our given, which is one point. 7 gram, which is G of calcium, and time the conversion factors. Notice how we have two of them. The order of conversion factor that you multiply is extremely important. This is the first one. So we multiply that by that one first. In this case, look at that conversion factor. One mole of A equal to the number of grams of A. So one mole of A, in this case, we know that A is a chemical calcium and equal to the number of gram, which is abbreviated by G of calcium. And that's the first conversion factor. Now let's multiply by the second conversion factor. Okay. So now we have one mole of A, look at right there, equal to 6.02 times 10 to 23rd representative particle. But we don't use representative particle. Why is that? Because we know exactly it's going to be atoms of A. Okay. So keep that in mind. So A is again calcium equal to 6.02, that's where I get it from here, times 10 to the 23rd atoms of Ca. So notice now in this problem, we no longer multiply by one conversion factor, but now we multiply by two because we are not adding right here, but we actually end right here. So that's a big different okay so again follow the conversion factor and follow the format always start from your given on the flowchart and end at the unknown let's try another problem in this case our given is 1.7 liters of oxygen gas and the unknown is grams of oxygen gas so again we always start from our given which on the flowchart where is liter and liter is right here okay and one of the most important information i forgot to mention that this actually happened at stp because in order to use this 
conversion factor right here, 1 moles of A equal to 22.4 liter of A, that conversion factor right there must be happen at STP, standard temperature and pressure. So we know that our given is at liters of oxygen. Again, I am looking at the box where it has liter, not the arrow, but the box. So this is where I start, okay? I put the S there. And where are we going to end in this problem? Of course, go back to our, your unknown, which is grams of oxygen gas. And grams of oxygen gas is going to be right there, which is mass of A. So this is where we are going to end. So how do I get from here to there? First, I had to use this first arrow right there. That's our first conversion factor. So each arrow, again, represent a conversion factor. Now, are we done? No, because we are actually ending at mass of A. So we need to go up one more to use the second arrow. So this is our second arrow. And again, in this problem, we multiply by two arrow. So let's go back and write out the answer. So let's go back and write out the answer. Of course, we follow this format. We need to identify what we are looking for. In this case, we are looking for grams of oxygen. Okay, so we have question mark and grams of relay by G, gram of oxygen, equal to what? So again, starting from our given. And then in this case, our given is 1.7 liter of oxygen. Time, the conversion factors until we get a unknown unit. In this case, we have the first one right there. The order of conversion factors is important. This one first, second, and so on. We follow the flow chart. This is the first one. So in this case, it's one moles of A equal to 22.4 liters of A. And of course, we know that what's A is going to be. A is a chemical. In this case, A is oxygen equal to 22.4 liter of oxygen. There you go. And then followed by the second conversion factor. See how I have multiplied to the next conversion factor. And in this case, one moles of A equal to grams of A. And I know that A is oxygen, so I put it right there, equal to number of gram, which is G, oxygen. Notice how I just follow the flow chart. That's all it is. And we are done. That's it. Okay, in terms of setting up the flow chart. Now let's try another problem. Now let's try a word problem. Okay, now let's try a word problem. In this case, I have a beaker containing 1.7 liters of water. Okay. And of course, this is gases water. Um, I just said that right there. So this is gases, okay? And if a beaker contains 1.7 liter of gases water, it has how many molecules of water at standard temperature and pressure? So if I have a beaker that has 1.7 liter of gases water, in that beaker has how many atoms of, or in this case specifically, how many molecules of water in that beaker okay so again we need to identify this is our given so we are given 1.7 and if you look at this carefully the given always have a given number where the unknown is the one that we are looking for so how many molecules of water so that's where it is so again go back we start from our given which is the box would have liter Again, go back to our flow chart. We start from the unit given. So look for the box that has liter in it. And here is liter again. And we are able to use this liter. Why is that? Because it's happened at standard temperature and pressure, STP. So this is where we start, okay? And where do we end in this case? Here, we end in molecules. And what is molecule? Molecule is a specific type of representative particle which is right here so this is where we are going to end so how do we from liter get to molecule I cannot just go like this way because there's no arrows or no conversion factor so we had to go up okay and what do we do next we got to go across and there you go so again this is the first conversion factor from our starting point and this is our second conversion factor from our starting point so we have to multiply in that order. So let's set up the problem again. Of course, I need to identify what am I looking for. I know that I am looking for molecules of water. 
okay? N is equal to, now we know where to start, which in this case is from our given 1.7 liter of H2O. And time the first conversion factor, which is 1 moles of A equal to 22.4 liters of A. So 1 moles of A, what is A in this case? It is water. And equal to 22.4 liter of water. Time by the next conversion factor, which is 1 moles of A equal to 6.02 times 10 to 23rd represented particles of A. But we don't use represented particle, we know a specific represented particle being in used in this case, and that is molecules, okay? So of course we have one moles of A, which is our chemical, H2O, equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. In this case, it's not represented particle, but it's molecules of H2O. And then we are done because we end right there. That's it. Isn't that easy? Let's try another problem. At standard temperature and pressure, which is STP, 1.37 times 10 to the 7 atoms of helium has how many liters of helium gas? So let's identify what is given to us. We are given number of atoms. And notice the numbers given to us. So that is our given. And what are we looking for? We're looking for how many liters of helium gas. So that is our given and this is our unknown, okay? So why is that important? Again, we're starting from the given unit, which is atoms. And where is atom on the flowchart? It is right there. It is part of the represented particle. So this is where we start. And where do we end? Always end on the unknown. So which is the unknown is the unit called liters and of course, we can use STP, and of course we can use this conversion factor because it is at STP. So this is where we are going to end. And this is where the liter is, okay? So this is where we're going to end, liter right there. Now let's go back and look at how we follow the flow chart. We start to get from here to there. We need to go across. That's first conversion factor. Then we had to go down, and that is our second conversion factor. We cannot go like this, okay? That doesn't work. Because there is no conversion factor that connects between those two units. So let's go back and set up the work. First of all, we need to go back and identify what are we looking for, which is liters of helium gas. And of course, there's going to be a question mark of liter HE equal to what? The first conversion factor is equal to well, before we do that, we need to identify what's given, right? Oh, right there, given. So in this case, is 1.3 times 10 to the 27 atom of helium, okay? And time the first conversion factor, before we can get to here, is 1 moles of A equal to 6.02 times 10 to 23rd represented particles of A. And we know that this rep is not just Specifically, we know it is atom. Okay, so keep that in mind. We got to use specific represent particle. So time that conversion factor one mole of a. Oh no, we know what's exactly what a is in this case. We know is helium. Okay, equal to six point zero two times ten to the twenty third atoms of helium. Okay, see how easy that is. And once we've done that conversion factor, we move on to the second one. Time the next conversion factor, which is one moles of E or one moles of A, or which is helium, equal to 22.4 liter of. Well, I don't need to write out the liter because I need to abbreviate out, abbreviate it, which is HE. So LHE. And then we are done. Isn't that easy? There you go. Let's try another problem. We have a beaker containing 1.7 liter water. Has how many moles of water at standard temperature and pressure? So again, we know that this is our given. Okay, that's our given because we're given a number with that. And from that beaker that has 1.7 liter water, how many moles of water is in that beaker? So that is our question mark. 
So again, based on the given unit, which is liter right here, we are starting right there. Because we're always starting from our given unit. And we end at the unknown unit, which in this case is mole. Oh, mole is right there. So we end right there. Isn't that easy to... Now let's go back. We start and we end. So go up and there we, we're done. Isn't that easy? So now it's just one conversion factor. So in this case, let's go back and set up the flow chart. Of course, we need to identify what we are looking for, which is quotient mole of H2O equal to are given in this case 1.7 liter of H2O times that conversion factor and we get to our unknown which in this case is 1 moles of A equal to 22.4 liters of A and I know that A is equal to water so 22.4 liter of H2O and we are done isn't that easy let's try another problem at standard temperature and pressure, at SCP of course, 5.7 liter of carbon dioxide, which is CO2, has how many grams of carbon dioxide? So first of all, this is our given, okay, so our given, we have the number right there. And we're looking for question mark grams of carbon dioxide, so that's our question mark. Again, we need to know the unit of our given because that's where we start. And of course, the liter is right here, so that's where we start. And where do we end? We always end at the unit of unknown, which is gram, and gram is right here. So this is where we are going to end. So to get from liter to gram, in order to use that, we need to be at the standard temperature and pressure, which we are. So we need to go up one conversion factor. Oh, not there yet. So now we get to mole, right? So from there, we need to go up another one. So there are two. This is the first one, this one is the second one. And that's pretty much it. Now let's plug in the problem and solve it out. So isn't that easy? Follow the flowchart, follow the flowchart. Always start from your given and end at the unknown unit. So we are starting from, well before we do that, we need to identify that we are looking for what? We are looking for grams of CO2 and equal to what? Well, our given unit, which in this case is liter. So we're using our given 5.7 liter of CO2 and time the first conversion factor, one moles of A equal to 22.4 liters of A time one moles of A, which in this case CO2 equal to 22.4 liter of CO2. That's one conversion factor. And let's move on to the next one times the next conversion factor, which is one moles of A equal to the number of grams of A. So we have one moles of A, okay, which is CO2 equal to grams of A. See, notice how I copied just the conversion factor directly from the flow chart, equal to number of grams, which is G of CO2. And there you go. We are done. Isn't that easy?